The College Board publicly released the free response questions for the 2023 AP U.S. History exam. If you want to see the questions, I put the links below to the documents themselves and the webpage you can find them. Also, now that it is publicly available, we can discuss it without breaking any rules. So let's first take a look at the DBQ, and later on, I will post videos for the LEQs and SAQs. Note, this may not be your DBQ. There are multiple versions of the exam, including a second 2023 DBQ that the College Board released. I will make a video breaking down that second DBQ, evaluate the extent to which the definitions of American citizenship changed from 1865 to 1920 in a forthcoming video. Okay, let's first take a look at the prompt itself. Evaluate the extent to which commercial development changed United States society from 1800 to 1855. The first things that came to my mind was, wow, second year in a row that a DBQ prompt is centered on period four. And this one goes a little into period five as well. And the topic of the prompt lends itself to a discussion of the market revolution and the growth of cotton plantations in the Deep South. Most students start their essays out with contextualization. So let's begin our analysis there. With contextualization, you want to discuss broader developments that relate to the topic of the prompt. Technically, it can be done before, during, or after the prompt, but I like to focus on immediately before the time period and a little bit into the time period of the prompt. So here's what I first thought about as good context. Keep in mind that you could definitely have other evidence for context than what I have here. So I went as far back as the revolutionary time period and those enlightenment ideals that are present in the Declaration of Independence and linking them to the societal familiar ideal of Republican motherhood. Then discussions around the type of commerce seen throughout most of the country being farming, whether on plantations or subsistence farming, which also leads to the Jeffersonian yeoman farmer republic ideal. I think discussions around the fierce debates of government involvement in the economy, specifically Hamilton's financial program, would work as well. Some great context would be discussions of inventions, innovations, and developments before and during the prime time period, like the cotton gin, spinning jenny, and Erie Canal. Then there could have been a lot of evidence that would work for context in the time period, but some of the major topics could possibly be the Second Great Awakening, Clay's American System, Era of the Common Man, Manifest Destiny, and the growth of slavery. Although you'll probably be talking about that in the body paragraphs itself, themselves. Turning to the thesis now, you had to make an argument based upon the prompt. Another way to think about and evaluate the extent to which style prompt is to ask how much or how great of an influence, change, or effect occurred. In this case, how much did commercial development change society during the time period? To answer this, you need to think about the evidence, especially from the docs, and where it leads you. Do they make a strong or weak case for the impact of commercial development on society? Your reasons or main points should have been borne out of what you think the docs and your background knowledge says about the topic. For the first document, we have a document from an association of churches in Connecticut that seems to be aimed at the general public and discussed a concern the churches have about the increase in the consumption of alcohol. It asks citizens to cut down or completely abstain from alcohol, of which employers should consider additional compensation to employees for those who quit drinking. This document most clearly links to reform movements, in this case, the temperance movement sprouting from the Second Great Awakening. I think it could either be used as evidence that religious organizations, not commercial development, had a greater impact on society. However, the aspect of additional compensation is interesting as that would imply an influence on wage workers and could be spun as a commercial development. The second document is an advertisement for an early steam engine. This goes with the market revolution and has a large economic and societal impact as a steam engine will reduce travel times both on water and eventually by rail, and it also leads to new industries and lines of work. The next document is from a plantation owner in Alabama, imploring his brother from up north in Washington, D.C. to bring his slaves to the south for sale as the current price is very high. The context around this source helps greatly to make connections to commercial developments and society, as the growth of cotton due to the cotton gin leads to the movement of enslaved peoples to the cotton-growing regions. This also leads to growing debates and sectional tensions over the further spread of slavery. This document goes well with document 7. The fourth document is from a college student who is warning his parents about how awful factory work is, and he does not like it that his sister works in one. He says factories are full of sin and very unhealthy, and that children need to find more wholesome places to learn or work. This document has historical context connections to the Lowell Mills and the changing nature of labor because of the new factory systems. This source shows that some believe the new factory systems are a negative for individuals that have to work in them. Okay, on to document five, which is an interesting document from an African-American writer who is discussing upper-class black society in Philadelphia. 
I've thought about this one for a while, and I'm not sure if there is a direct connection to commercial development and society. It might be better used with the first document as an example of how society is more influenced by other areas, like the Second Great Awakening or attitudes towards race. But if you're going to use it to support commercial development impacts in society, maybe a discussion about the different goods in their parlors. But it feels like there is more of a clear connection to either the temperance movement or discrimination. As the author discusses the observance of abstinence to alcohol in the middle, and discriminatory attitudes at the end. Next, we have a document from the Lowell Mills, which discusses life for the workers. It starts out like document four with criticism of life as a laborer. However, it changes to talk about the positives, including the, their valued free time and the activities outside of work, and also the earning of consistent money. In general, it could be paired as a different point of view from document four. The last document is from friend of APUS history, the great Frederick Douglass. In this excerpt, Douglas is speaking to white wage workers and trying to convince them of the need that they need to see slavery as an institution that hurts them as well, as the existence of slavery suppresses their wages. Douglas is making both an economic and moral argument. The document pairs well with document three in an overall discussion of the growth of King Cotton. By the time Douglas is writing this editorial, the era of manifest destiny has led and will increasingly lead to intense debates about whether slavery should be extended into the new territories and states. Finally, some pieces of outside evidence, which would be evidence that is not linked to any of the documents at all, and it could go towards aiding an argument. A few things that I thought of that could have been weaved nicely into an essay are Clay's American System, Market Revolution's Innovations and Their Impact, Political Compromises Over the Issue of the Expansion of Slavery, the Development of a Middle Class and Middle Class Media, specifically publications for women. Also, I think the era of the common man with suffrage expanded to alt-white male citizens could be used as well. I hope this video helped to put you at ease about your essay, but feel free to leave essay questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.